Hey, you want some of these gorgeous leaves? You want to watch them pray? Well, just in case you didn't know, not all prayer plants are divas. Some are actually quite easy to take care of. So let's talk about that. I want you to be as prepared as possible for plant parenthood. Today we'll be focusing on four genera of the prayer plant family. Calathea, Maranta, Tremanti, Tianti, which are all part of the Marantasia family. They are also known as the air root family because they grow rhine zones and shoot off to the side to create new babies. Hence, they are mostly propagated through division. If this is your first time dipping your toes into prayer plants, I highly recommend the Maranta genus. The most common ones you will find is the lemon lime Maranta and red Maranta. They have an interesting fishbone-like marking on each leaf, making them quite unique. I butchered my lemon and lime because it was very root bound, but it's on its way to recovery. I don't like the coloration of the red Maranta as much, but I got this baby through a trade and I've been enjoying watching it grow. The rabbit foot Maranta is also common, but not many places carry it. Here is the variegated version. It has white markings and on the newer leaves, the tracks are pink. I really like this one. It was love at first sight. I also learned that the variegation fades in lower light, so more recently I've moved it into higher light. Lastly, the most rare is the silver band Maranta. I imagine the care to be pretty similar, but I'll let you know when I get it. Overall, they are a fun and easy bunch. You will enjoy their movement as well as their unique markings. They can survive in low light and will thrive in medium bright light. I've even seen them at the nursery in direct sunlight. If you do decide to introduce direct light, make sure you do it slowly. Otherwise, they will burn and the leaves will curl up to protect themselves from the rays. If you notice brown tips developing and you're using tap water, I would recommend you switching over to filtered water or distilled water. Don't let the soil dry out. I usually water it when the top soil is slightly dry. Maranta are the easiest because they're the most forgiving of lower levels of humidity and they will do well in most homes. Bonus, they propagate easily in water so you can share them with your friends. And finally, they have a trailing habit, making them suitable for hanging baskets. Next is my favorite, Shramanthi Trio Star. Well, I have many favorites, but the Trio Star is beautiful and super easy to care for. It's definitely one of my top five. The red backing is really rich, and when the light shines through the cream, it really highlights the pink. The leaves are thicker than the Marantas. They spread like a fan, and the new growth comes from the center. They can get up to three feet tall, but they're not fast growers, so it'll take a few years. Their care is similar to a Maranta, but they do need more light than a Maranta. If you really like the creamy color, increase their light exposure further. I know I've said this already, but when the light shines on the leaves, it's like strawberry shortcake ice cream. I got mine from the grocery store, and they seem to be becoming more readily available. So go on and get one. It should be on everyone's list. TNTs are similar to the Stramantes as far as their care and texture of their leaves. If you already have a Trio Star, go ahead and get into them without any problems. They may be harder to find locally, but you can order the more common ones easily online. They have very interesting leaf patterns, and the green faces and purple backs make them a visual delight. Some can be tall, and others grow on the ground as clumps, making them perfect for your urban jungle. Moving on to the Calatheas. This genus has a lot of variety and the most beautiful foliage. While they belong to the same genus, the texture of their leaves vary tremendously. And this is a good way to tell what kind of diva the plant's gonna be. There are many Calatheas that have thick foliage, just like the Stramanti and TNT. These are pretty easy to care for as they can tolerate lower humidity. However, when shopping for these plants, make sure they're healthy. You wanna give yourself a good start. That means no yellowing leaves, no brown tips, and check for pests. I bought a Calathea ornata from Lowe's, and it wasn't well. I thought I'd nurse it back to health, but after struggling for three months, it's now been beheaded. So wait until you find a healthy plant. You'll be happy that you did. There are many Calatheas to choose from that are easy to care for. The medallion is a good start. The round leaves are unique to this genus. The ornata has lovely pink stripes. I personally love the bakuyana. Their fronts are just as attractive as their backs. Freddy is also very popular with its fun dots. The Rufi Barba has a fine fuzz if you like petting your plants. 
The rotundifolia resembles the orbifolia. It's hardier, and I love the dark contrast. They remind me of turtle shells. The beauty star can be easily confused with the ornata, but it has feathered markings in the middle, and the stripes can be white or pink. The musica is also very easy to care for, but it's rare. It has an intricate grid-like pattern, earning it the common name network calathea. There are many, many more calatheas that are easy to care for, so don't be afraid to bring one home. They are easy as a pothos. Now let's look at the true divas of the bunch. What makes them more challenging? Humidity. Most homes have about 45% humidity, and there are hacks that you can use to increase the humidity level, but these guys need at least 60%, so you'll probably need to buy a humidifier if you want to keep these guys happy. Here's Sabrina with her fishbone pattern and soft leaves. The Vorsavixii is softer than bunny ears, and they have purple backs. The White Fusion, Queen of Divas, has really thin leaves and requires high humidity. You want the whole story? Watch my vid. The Orbifolia. I haven't had mine for very long, so I can't really tell. But it definitely challenges the White Fusion for its title. These plants are very expressive and vocal, and I think because of this, people find them very fussy. Unlike other plants who suffer in silence and die a slow death when neglected, they're just not very adaptable. So as their parent, you're going to have to cater to their needs, just like millennials. Are they worth the trouble? Yes! I still love them even though they're demanding. Maybe it's because they remind me of myself. I hope this helps you become a proud parent of a member of the Morantisi family. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up. And better yet, subscribe if you want to grow along with us. Until next time, thank you for watching.